Hey everybody, Judah Hoover uh, coming to you here from the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group uh, out walking the property. This will be video number 10 and I appreciate the support that I've been getting for these and uh, how much everybody's been liking them. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe uh, to this channel so you get uh, more feedback and more information and the latest uh, videos when they come out. Uh, walking a newly constructed townhouse here uh, in Redline, Pennsylvania, a little town uh, just south of York, and I want to talk a little bit more about townhouses, uh, and I want to talk about setting the rent right. Uh, one of the, my pet peeves is when people say I want to set the rent high so that I get good quality tenants. Uh, we're going to talk about why that is not only wrong, it is flat out wrong. Um, but Guys, I have done more uh, townhouse deals than I have any other type of deal. It's uh, the type of product and property that I like the most. Um, I like new construction townhouse, uh, ones that have been done in less than 10 years or certainly ones that have uh, even just you know recently been completed. I showed you that bulldozer in that uh, flat lot back there because they're looking at building about 10 more. And you can usually pick these up uh, pretty inexpensively directly from the builder. You can also usually pre pick them up um, you know, if you don't go top of the line on all the upgrades that you can get. Um, you can get the same square footage that a lot of other people are paying more for because of all the upgrades they're getting and that's a very favorable comp to you. And if you hold these townhouses for two to three to five years while the development is being completed and then sell them, you can usually do really good. Uh, it's a new construction, so not a whole lot goes wrong with it. Um, and they're just, they're, they've just turned out to be a great investment. Um, you can always tell kind of the phase that the townhouse uh, community is in based on uh, the road. Excuse me. If you if you don't see a bulldozer, a giant yellow bulldozer like we saw there, um, and you're, and that's not a dead giveaway for whether there's still construction going on. If the road doesn't have its top surface on it, so you can see here how much of a curb uh, there is. Uh, between the road surface and this. This obviously isn't a finished curb here on this sidewalk. Um, there's some other places where just around the storm grading, uh, you can tell that this is still a project that's that's under, uh, under construction. And it's an ideal time, I think, to buy it. We're gonna go inside uh, and we're gonna walk this house and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, some of the numbers for it. We're also gonna talk about why it is setting the rent too high oftentimes will have the exact opposite effect of what you're looking for. All right, so as is typically the case, whenever we're walking uh, these townhouses, you can see the garage is here on like this first floor, first level, what kind of functions as the basement, one car garage, we come in there and you've got this like little lower hallway, closet right here, that goes upstairs to the main living area, this back here is going to be a semi-finished room, but this would mostly be, the intention here would be storage. We can see sprinkler heads because this is a pretty new construction house and we're going to talk more about that. I would love to know in the comments if anybody can tell me what the heck is going on here. I don't know why this piece of two by 10 is stapled away from the wall the way that it is, unless they kind of intended maybe this insulation would come out a little bit more. But I'm not 100% sure why the baseboard comes around, or I guess they left room for that to be studded out with drywall at some point. That's why that's there, pre-built for drywall. And then that would be the baseboard for it. Got it. See it? Figured that out all by myself. So what we have here is an interesting setup. You see this pretty commonly. We've got an uh, electric hot water heater. You can tell because the orange cord coming out the top there and that is a gas line, yellow flex cord like ca a cable pipe, whatever. Um, also, I forget what the efficiency needs to be for the exhaust lines like that to be PVC instead of metal, but uh, whenever you see PVC exhaust, you know that it's something ridiculous like 90 or 95% efficiency, which is absolutely uh, great. I should have took my rudders cup out of here before I shot this video because they're certainly not paying me for a subscription or sponsorship yet. 
Uh, here we've got the kind of the setup for the sprinkler system and this you know sign needs to stay here anything built in Pennsylvania and potentially the US that is more than three connected units even if it's going to be owner occupied in the last like five to seven years this law changed they need to be pre-built with sprinkler systems in them now the thing to, that's important there is if this house were to go through a foreclosure if there would be uh, a period of vacancy or anything like that if you're buying these units in distress you need to know that there is an entirely separate water system not just the water water system but the sprinkler water system that you need to pay attention to uh, backyard here you can see those other five homes that were built over there because of some grading they didn't finish a full row of eight. Typically townhomes like this are built eight at a time in a house. I love townhomes like this. I'm gonna tell you why as I walk through this because when the project is still under construction like this, you can get great deals working directly with the developer and there's a lot of co-marketing going on. So I love buying these and then doing like a rent to own situation or finding a nice long-term tenant uh, that would occupy it. Uh, the other th reason I like them is there are a lot of houses that are close together. So I've found a lot of motivated sellers by hanging, not at the mailbox, but on the door, you know, we buy houses flyers. Uh, these are usually starter homes for people. And what that means is they're purchased by a young couple that just got married. And unfortunately the divorce rate, hey, hi Judah, hi, how are you? Uh, the divorce rate for young couples is pretty high kind of cool big master bath here double bowl sink nothing too fancy on the vanity or mirror there just to kind of straight set up walk-in closet here anyway but when people are starting out their life and they buy a, a house sometimes in the first two to three years they don't have a lot of equity shared bathroom up here for the other two beds this is a three bedroom house and I kind of like that they didn't just do like a straight division. They kind of built that wall at a little bit of an angle. And you can see it in the other one too. Rounded corners. This is like a $150,000 house. Um, usually in the two hundred dollars to $400,000 price range, you see drywall corners rounded like that with a dowel rod. Um, so that's a nice little touch here that you don't often see in houses in this price point. Three small windows instead of two giant ones or oh, one main one and then two smaller ones on the other side. Again, just a cool detail. Anyway, here's the deal. A lot of these townhome communities when they're finished have 150, 200, 300 houses and I've found a whole lot better response rate by walking them on a Saturday afternoon and hanging flyers than, than mailing out postcards. So if you're looking for motivated sellers, here's that other wall that we were talking about, just kind of a different angle. Instead of doing a straight shot there, they kind of, I don't know, did something funky. I'm not coming up with the right words to describe it, but it's a nice little addition to how that looks. So I used to walk neighborhoods like this all the time and hang flyers and would do that instead of mailing out postcards. I got a much better response rate because people aren't getting it in their mail. They're getting it, they're getting a door knocker hung on their door. They're getting a flyer rolled up and shoved uh, in the screen door. And you got a whole lot better response because when people first buy a house, maybe their dream job comes two states away and they have to move, but they don't have the equity. And so these townhomes make perfect setups for subject to that then you turn into rent to own. It's my favorite way of doing real estate is takeover payments on a subject to on a nice, beautiful house like this in a nice, beautiful neighborhood that doesn't have any fleas and is going to have very little maintenance problems or other issues like that. Uh, and then you also get the benefit of the appreciation of the neighborhood and you can market to so many people in so many places all at once. So I love these townhomes for all those reasons.
easy to market to, they're usually ready-made to just create motivated sellers for all kinds of unfortunate good and bad reasons. You know, people are always going to get divorced, people are always going to go bankrupt, bad stuff is always going to happen uh, to good people, and townhome communities like this is just uh, an amazing opportunity to to find and take advantage of those situations. This one's a little bit small, probably going to be less than 100 units when it's all said and done. But still, lots of neighboring townhome communities here in the area. All right, so let's talk a little bit about kind of what I teased here with setting the rent too high. So let's say, I think the rent here, well, I don't want to say what the rent here is because it'll be different in your market. But let's say the rent here was $1,000 a month, okay? It's not. It's probably going to be, you know, more than that. But let's just, to keep the numbers nice and easy, let's say the rent uh, here should be $1,000 a month. If you, as an investor, say, I'm going to set the rent high so that I get good, high-quality people here or better quality people, that works for purse, purses, that works for cars, that works for a whole lot of things. It does not work when you're trying to rent property. A higher price does not mean you're going to attract a higher quality person. In fact, it means just the opposite. Uh, the only people who you are going to attract are going to be the people who are desperate to take anything and hope that you're not going to do as much uh, criminal background check or credit checks or things like that. It's going to sit vacant longer. So instead of filling a property in 15 to 20 days, you're, it's going to take 60 days to fill it. So you're going to have more vacancy. You're also going to be marketing to a much smaller segment of the population. You're going to attract fewer potential tenants. A better thing to do is set the rent right. Set it at the market. Set it 5% below the market. Not 10% below the market, 5% below the market. Because if you set the rent 5% below the market or at the market, you're going to attract many more people. Supply and demand. With a greater uh, demand and greater supply of people, you're going to be able to pick the best people from a much larger pool of applicants and you're going to end up with a higher quality tenant in the property. So again, we've talked about this uh, before on previous videos. I absolutely love uh, townhouses. Um, I love new construction townhouses, 15 years old or younger. Uh, if they're finished being constructed. They're a great market for um, motivated sellers who a lot of real estate investors don't know how to market to and don't know how to attract because they don't have enough equity in them to accept you know, your low ball cash offer, but they're ripe for a subject to type offer. Um, if they're still being constructed, the builder is going to have pre-existing relationships with all kinds of banks. And the builder is going to work with you to get you financed. The builder wants you to buy that house, even if it's going to be an investment property. And he's going to try and work with the bank to do all kinds of creative ways of getting you into that property. And I've found working with builders to buy new townhouses is a phenomenal way of adding to your portfolio. Um, and like I said, just to underline the point again, do not set rent too high, thinking that if you set rent high, you're going to be able to get a better quality person. Just the opposite is true. Just the opposite has been proven to be true time and time again. Set the rent at market or below and you'll have better success. This is Judah Hoover with the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group. I hope you like this video. Please share it and uh, please give me a subscribe and a like. Comment down below uh, if you have any questions uh, or you know something different than I do about what that funky baseboard thing was uh, in that uh, almost finished basement. Have a great day.